for many holidaymakers around the world the chance to experience real magic and the awfully big adventure that comes with a trip to one of the famous mouse's houses is exactly what dreams are made of. So join us as we explore the endless possibilities of that great big beautiful world of Disney as we travel to the magic. Well, hello, Disney vacationers around the world. It's Tom from Flight Mickey Travel for another Travel to the Magic podcast for this Thursday, the 16th of September 2021. And today's podcast is going to be ever so slightly shorter than usual because it's been a crazy time for the travel industry. It's like someone has just turned the lights back on again and people are eagerly booking their Disney vacations all around the world. And therefore, it's taking just a little bit more of my time up than it has been in the last 18 months or so, which is great. It's great to see the world of travel starting to pick up again. It's lovely to see the Disney parks expanding, capacity growing, new events coming, and of course, big celebrations on the way for several of the parks in the Disney universe for sure. And that's kind of brought me to a topic for today's Travel to the Magic podcast. And that is to look at the role of the Disney ambassadors and how their jobs can really influence the way we experience the different Disney parks and destinations around the globe. And that's because right now, various candidates in the different parks are either being selected or going through the selection process to become the 2022-2023 ambassadors for the Walt Disney Company. But like with a lot of the topics we talk about here on TTTM, let's first look at the history behind the Ambassador Programme. And it all started back in 1965 with Walter Elias Disney himself, the original Imagineer. And it was 10 years after Disneyland had officially opened and the launch of Mary Poppins was just a mere month or two away. And he found his schedule was getting more and more and more compact. More people wanted to spend time time with Walt. More corporate organisations wanted to grab his attention and of course he wanted to spend more time with the cast members making sure that Disneyland and of course the wider Walt Disney Studios and the company were growing successfully. But of course this was all too much for one single man to do all on his own. And so between Walt Disney and his marketing executive at the time, Jack Lindquist, they created the Disney Ambassador Program, where the representatives appointed would act on Walt's behalf. And so therefore, Julie Ream became the first official Miss Disneyland. And so her job became welcoming VIPs and dignitaries, making various appearances around the parks and outside the resort, and to represent Walt's interests and Disneyland's whenever he was unable to do it himself. Julie originally started her life at Disneyland during college, spending her summers and school breaks working part-time as a tour guide. And in fact, it was during one of these sessions that she first met the man himself, Walt had decided to follow one of her tour groups, but this upset one or two of the paying members of the public in the group, who decided to complain to Julie. Although she felt it highly inappropriate to actually go up to the owner of the company and ask him to move along, she did hope that Walt would overhear the conversation and maybe make that decision himself. After a moment or two, Walt just winked and grinned and then walked away. Julie wrote on a fan site once that she felt that Walt liked to surprise the cast members just to see how they would react to various different situations. Clearly, he'd been impressed with the way she'd handled this delicate problem, as only a short while later, he offered her the first Disney ambassadorship. Her two years in the position took her all over the world, from collecting awards and honours on behalf of Walt Disney himself, to appearing on the wonderful World of Colour episode, the Disneyland 10th Anniversary Show. And to this day, Julie Ream is the role model by which all Disney ambassadors look up to, as she embodies Walt Disney's vision that an ambassador should be the personification of Disneyland's world-famous spirit of friendliness and happiness. And this continued to the new appointment in 1971 of Debbie Dane as the Disney ambassador for the newly opened Walt Disney World Resort in Florida. 
Today, you can find ambassadors in Disneyland, Walt Disney World, Hong Kong Disneyland, Shanghai Disneyland, Tokyo Disney Resort, Disneyland Paris, and at Alani, all of whom now get selected in the same year and will serve a maximum of a two-year term. Now, you may be wondering why I'm talking about the ambassadorship where they work with VIPs and dignitaries in a Travel to the Magic podcast. Well, the ambassadors have been nothing but amazing during the last two years, engaging the general public with the cast members in the parks, while a lot of them have been closed. And my home park, that is Disneyland in Paris have just literally a day or two ago appointed their brand new ambassadors who will take up their positions from the 1st of January 2022 and will get to oversee the resort through its 30th anniversary celebrations that kick off in March of next year. But the outgoing ambassador Gioni Prevetti, who we are all going to miss so very much, has been nothing short of a shining example of why the ambassador program is so important to the Walt Disney Company. Of course, Gioni took up his position on the 1st of January 2019, just before the global pandemic kicked in. And who knew back then that the parks would be closed for so long and that the ambassador would become a vital role in connecting the local community, the cast members and the wider Disney fan base together during very, very tough times. The ambassadors the world over, like Gioni, have not only provided us with virtual parades and fireworks and quizzes and games and social media content to enjoy, like TikTok dancing outside our favourite castles, but they've also given us a glimpse behind the curtain of the work they do with the wonderful Disney volunteers who have gone out into their local communities during this pandemic time to provide not only food and essentials, but also to give vital support and a little bit of magic to those who are left most in need. And so therefore we can see that the ambassador role is so much more than just cutting ribbons and showing dignities around the parks. They are the link between the Disney company, the cast members and the fans alike with an aim to make everything so much more magical and a better experience for all. So how do the Disney ambassadors actually get appointed? Well, to be eligible to apply, first of all, you need to be an employee of the Walt Disney Company for at least six months. The first step in the application process is an essay response to the question, why do you think you would be a good Disney ambassador? I hate questions like that when you go for a job interview. It's always a tricky one to answer, but must be even more stressful when you're going for a job like this. And it's only step one in a very long process to becoming appointed. Step two, if they've made it through the first selection process, is a four-week observation period where every shift from this point onwards is treated like a test or a trial run of being an ambassador. The managers observe the actions with the guests and with fellow cast members, take notes and give a lot of feedback. And so therefore, you would definitely have to be someone with a high level of commitment to be able to get out the other side of this stage into stage three three which is a test of your Disney knowledge. Sounds easy, right? Well, according to previous ambassadors, this test is extremely difficult and includes questions from categories like Disney company knowledge, movie knowledge, character knowledge, song knowledge, merchandising knowledge, and of course, the health and safety questions. To make the test even more challenging, it is short and long answers. There are no multiple choices and the passing grade must be 75% or higher. If they make it through all of those stages, their applications along with their test scores, observation notes and essay responses are sent to head office of the park where the final decision will be made. And of course, then the winners announced. It most definitely isn't an easy process to go through. But ultimately, the winners become the emissaries of goodwill in their parks and the voice of Walt Disney himself, making sure that the magic and spirit that he stood for continues on today and into the future. 
So what next for the newly appointed ambassadors? Well, they'll be heading off to Disneyland in California and also over to the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, where they'll meet all of the other global ambassadors for a huge training session where they'll get to know how the company works, how they can best represent the cast members within their own parks and also learn more about the ways to work with us, the Disney fans around the world in making the parks and destinations that little bit more magical during their tenureship. And so that actually brings us to the end of a very short episode of Travel to the Magic this week. I wanted to talk about the Ambassadors because I think they are a vital part of our overall Disney experiences. And although this episode has not been 100% based on travel, it does all link together to make sure you get the most out of your experiences at a Disney park or destination. And if you happen to be thinking about going away to a Disney resort, then get in touch with me here at Fly Mickey Travel. We'd love to help make that magic happen for you and if you have any suggestions on travel to the magic podcast content for future episodes then get in touch with us via another disney podcast on all social media platforms and all that is left for me to say this week is have yourself an absolutely amazing magical day (laughs) 